in today's video. Hi guys, welcome to today's video uh, about uh, Mirmo Terrace and actually so starting from the beginning sorry because i got distracted i just seen a worker catch a springtail i'll cl zoom it closer later on so ba basically uh this is their enclosure a acrylic closed box with um with some substrate and um some plaster on the bottom and some hydration chambers uh, to humidify the plaster and then the soil um, let me use the tweezers here so basically the reason why this is uh, looking this way it's because I'm using this leaf to collect the springtails from my springtail culture and then drop it inside and sometimes it brings some particles of water and this creates this mold which is good in my opinion because it allows the springtails which are now under the the leaf I'll just take this for you to see there are some over there and some under the leaf so this allowed, allows them to um, to stay alive for a few more days before the, the ants um, hunt them down now let's to zoom in the into the nest itself. So this, the nest is covered by another acrylic um, cover, and so the workers are now getting excited because um, they were able to feel the the scent of the springtails which I just introduced to the nest and you can see that they have actually caught one already the queen is in the corner facing um, up, upside down as you can see and they have caught another one actually I didn't see that on the right side this is their brood so we have some eggs some larvae but no pupa I actually have two queens in this colony. You can see them uh, here in the center, facing each other, one on the left, one on the right, and the others are workers. So they are, um, they are developing, well, they are stable, let's say it this way. They are stable, but uh, by now, I was expecting to have pupa already. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing this happening. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing wrong, but um, uh, hopefully this will change. Sorry for the shakiness, I'll try to get this more stable. So, the ants are now coming out and exploring the, the outworld for more, for more springtails, Ju but just follow this worker for a few more minutes while I talk. Um, Mirmoteris is a genus but also a subgenus. So the genus Mirmoteris has two subgenus. The, the Mirmoteris subgenus as well which is characterized... oh there we have two springtails over there. Which is characterized by uh, having a two hairs, two trigger hairs in between their mandibles while the other subgenus Mirgoteras or something like that sorry I cannot recall and I'm focusing on the on the video so I cannot look at the screen to tell you the right name but you can check the blog the other subgenus it's characterized by not having these two trigger hairs so why is this uh, important or even relevant well um, it highlights the the fact that these ants rely um, on their eyes to actually hunt their prey without the trigger hairs the that particular genus is not capable 
of identifying the location of the of the prey except by the use the usage of their antennae and their visual equity as it's happening here now uh, in the Mirmo Terrace case let's see if it triggers Pow. all right well done so in the case of Mirmo Terrace uh, the trigger hairs is what um, releases the um, the mandibles and allows the the ant to impale their prey. Myrmoteris is a Formicinae um, ant, so it's uh, it's not a Ponerinae. Um, this means it's capable of um, doing trophallaxis, so the mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding. They will feed regularly on sugar water and they will share this uh, between the queens, the workers and even the larvae. The, the pupa, as I mentioned before, are not naked. They will uh, silk cocoons. And I'm trying to remember more interesting things to to tell you about this uh, this genus. Uh, they because they are for missing eye. I just remember they they have um, formic acid, um, and they are, in my opinion, really really interesting. Well, let me try to get closer. See if I can manage to focus this. And we are observing here the ant releasing the springtail on the larvae for their feeding. Sorry to always mention the blog, but uh, I have been doing these daily videos as you have been seeing. And uh, basically the bottom line is uh, avoiding uh, spending too much time editing the videos and preparing them like before uh, I, I do not have the time for that but still I want to continue posting so I rather have you guys going to the to the log or the, and checking the pictures and the articles um, in more detail um, where I actually spend a little bit more time to to write the information that I think it's interesting so I invite you once again to to do that um, let's see if there's a, another one hunting. Mm, no, not at this moment. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the colony, to be honest. Uh, as I told you before, the, I haven't seen any pupa. And today, while I was preparing to, to do the video, and I was collecting some springtails from my springtail colony, I w saw that the springtails themselves are not doing very good, very well. Um, I think I'm doing something wrong with their keeping, and I don't know if the temperature in my room is too warm, too hot. If I'm providing the right, uh, the right food, I don't know yet. So, uh, in the next few days, I'll order more springtails and to see if I can overcome this situation. Um, there is another ant keeper in the, um, in the Asian community, Mr. Spleen, Master Spleen, who also keeps uh, these ants, a colony of these ants, and he has been able to um, feed uh, his colony with uh, crushed uh, baby roaches. Uh, I tried that already and I haven't been very su successful. These seem much more interested in the springtails and in the movement. But they are so small and it's quite tricky to find the, um, the right size roach for them. Um, so another thing I remembered about this species, their colonies are 
particularly small. Uh, they are one of the smallest known species. Uh, sorry, their species are known for having the smallest colonies out in the in the world, um, alongside with other some other ponderine. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, these are the only Formicinae uh, species that um, have such small colonies. Normally, the I think the average number for a uh, mature uh, Myrmoteris colony is between 10 to 20 workers. And what end up happen ends up happening is that they will develop um, huge amounts of elites, queens and drones. And and so the the queens will actually um, will actually end up doing the the workers' task, and um, so hunting, uh, feeding, doing truffle access, cleaning, grooming, and if I'm not mistaken, this queen here on the right on the left is the let's call it the worker queen the queen that hunts while the the other one which one i lost track where am i mistaken where is she she disappeared i oh, know she's over there she's here so this one hanging upside down is the real queen she's the egg laying queen so because their colonies are so small and they need to reproduce, so this ends up happening. The my colony originally came with already with these two queens, um, and I think twenty workers. I'm not sure exactly how many I have here now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen because one is hidden under the lid. Yeah, 14. So I had some um, I had some casualties, spe especially during the beginning, during the acclimation stage. Um, they came without any brood, and since then they have been laying quite consistently. The feeding schedule: I f always try to give them honey water every two two days, and um, springtails alternately also every two days. Um, what you're seeing here is called uh, mastication, if I'm not mistaken, which is transforming, uh, impaling the springtail until it transforms into a a ball of a mess uh, to squeeze out the juices so that they can drink upon them so they will do this continuously uh, puncturing the skin of the springtail uh, and you can see now that the, the other worker now is going there and having a drink and they will actually help each other to do this find these ends although very small they are very fascinating and they're um, very big eyes give them this very alienish look uh, 13 minutes reaching the 14th minute so I don't want to take too much longer I think I covered what I could on this one um, normally the these uh, ant uh, logs will run every other day as you know and because I have around uh, 15 colonies we will be seeing them again uh, within a month so I hope by then I can have some pupa some more development that the springtail issue has stabilized let me know in the comment section what other um, questions you have um, I hope I managed to answer most of them by now and if not again I ask you to go to the log and see the blog and see the uh, more pictures and more information about how to keep them. I actually did a care guide on them, so 
yeah guys thank you very much for watching thank you for your support um and see you on tomorrow's video about uh, roaches again and let me know if you were enjoying this series bye bye see you good weekend